early settlers to North Bossier Parish arrived in the late 1830s, after Captain Henry Shreve cleared the Great Raft Log Jam in the Red River. The opening of the river allowed for cotton transport to Shreveport and New Orleans. Early landowners, the Gilmers, established a plantation called Plain Dealing, even before Bossier Parish was created, which was in 1843. George Oglethorpe Gilmer bought and put into cultivation three large river farms for cotton, each containing more than 1,000 acres. He gave all of these river farms, together with more than half of the Plain Dealing tract, to his children while he was alive. His son, James B. Gilmer, chose to have his home, called Orchard Place, built about four miles south of current Plain Dealing. Orchard Place was considered to have been one of the largest and most ornate homes in Bossier Parish. Orchard Place is believed to be designed and constructed by George Paysinger, a talented carpenter and skilled architect, who was enslaved by John Hammeter. Hammeter profited by hiring Paysinger out to other plantation owners, like Gilmer. When railroads came into the parish, agriculturally based communities like Redland, Collinsburg, Cottage Grove, and Rocky Mount faded away while the new railroad towns thrived. With the railroad depot, Plain Dealing grew into a prosperous community. The town and railroad depot were first known as Gernschein, after a prominent stockholder of the St. Louis Southwestern Railroad. Better known as the Cotton Belt, this railroad came in 1888. A public auction of lots was held at the depot, and 348 lots were sold. The area was quickly populated along the tracks with businesses and homes. The 1890 charter noted that the town's boundaries were one square mile from a nail at the Cotton Belt Depot. The town's name was soon changed to Plain Dealing, implying honesty and integrity after the large Gilmer plantation that had covered the land. Merchants lined the main streets of Plain Dealing during the town's economically prosperous times. Plain Dealing was incorporated in 1890 with William Benton Boggs serving as the first mayor. S.J. Ziegler opened a general mercantile store in 1888 on the site now occupied by the Walker Drug Store. Ziegler donated and deeded the land for the Plain Dealing Cemetery in 1891. The cemetery is located north of town off of Highway 157. The historic cemetery has many ornate Italian marble monuments on its grounds. The first drug store in Plain Dealing was established by John Swindle, who moved from Redland in 1888 and built his new store on the lot now occupied by Turnley Mercantile Company. The Plain Dealing Bank was founded in 1906. The first school was a private school and was known as the Pioneer School. It was later converted into the Plain Dealing High School, one of the first in the state to inaugurate rural transportation to schools. Mr. Johnston, well remembered as Professor Johnston, was a teacher in the Rocky Mount School at the time the Pioneer School was established. He later became parish superintendent of education and practiced law at Benton. Carrie Martin was a school teacher and supervisor in the Bossier Parish Schools from 1913 to 1925, but these job titles only hint at the effect she had on black education in Bossier Parish. After teaching for a number of years in the Plain Dealing area, she was appointed the Jean Supervisor of the black schools in the parish. She was the third Jean Supervisor appointed in the state of Louisiana and the first in Bossier Parish. Plain Dealing's Carrie Martin High School founded in 1952, was named in her honor and taught grades 1 through 12. Upon school integration, the name was changed to Plain Dealing Elementary in 1969. The honorary name of Carrie Martin returned to the school in 2002 because her name had such historical importance to the people of Plain Dealing. One of the graduates of Carrie Martin, Vassie McCauley Richardson, made history in 1996 as the first black woman on the Bossier Parish School Board she became president of the school board in 2002. In 1917, the Shreveport Times newspaper commented on the growth in plain dealing. There are 35 business houses here, three cotton gins, 10 dry goods houses, more than Shreveport, two garages, two beautiful drug stores, two hotels, two restaurants, all making money hand over, a fine jeweler and an electric theater. There are two banks, one old and established, and a new one nearing completion to be opened soon. Plain Dealing had paved sidewalks before Shreveport, believe it or not. Plain Dealing has been the seat of the parish fair for 11 years. It is the center of a mighty fine agricultural district, and on top of that has recently developed an oil field.
the end of World War II brought a building boom to downtown Plain Dealing. The October 18, 1946 issue of the Plain Dealing Progress newspaper announced that three brick buildings were nearing completion and that others would soon follow. The first chapter of Plain Dealing's greatest building surge is soon to become history. With this opening chapter of Plain Dealing's new growth relegated to the past, the setting of a new and possibly greater chapter seems clearly in the making. With the big Bollinger lumber plant and yards in South Plain Dealing soon to break ground, and plans for the greatly expanded soap factory on the opposite flank taking shape, all should find themselves in a most optimistic mood considering the near future of this North Bossier city. Plain Dealing grew rapidly in the 1950s. Home building construction in and near the town was immense, and the completion of the Miller's Bluff Bridge allowed a speedier connection to Shreveport and Caddo Parish. Leon Sanders held the office of Plain Dealing Mayor for over 40 years. He owned and operated the Sanders Department Store, which burned in 1999. Sanders was instrumental in the completion of the dams and lakes that helped to prevent regular flooding in the town. The town of Plain Dealing dealt with flooding for generations, until a plan in the mid-1950s to build three reservoir lakes took shape. Plain Dealing was surrounded by rolling hills on all sides, and the main business area flooded with any heavy rainfall. Damages to farmland were approximately $4,000 annually, and with the Watershed Protection and Flood Prevention Act passed by Congress in 1954, farmers on the Upper West Fork of Cypress Bayou became interested in the agricultural benefits of a watershed project for plain dealing. Flash flooding was the main concern, as the town generally experienced three to five floods in the spring months. Floods in April of 1958 seriously damaged crops, and 12 inches of rain in one week brought five overflows to the town. Residents tried to save their buildings by placing feed sacks and doorways, but water crept into the Kelly Drug Store, the Dole's Insurance Agency, the Post Office, and the Telephone Exchange. For decades, this flourishing little town endured an average of four floods per year, costing residents and business owners an estimated $41,000 of damage to plain dealing homes and stores annually. In 1958, a delegation of six citizens, including M.R. Bollinger, John Doles Jr. and Leon Sanders attended an area meeting of the Soil Erosion Group in Minden. They planned to take advantage of the benefits of the Watershed Protection and Flood Prevention Act passed by Congress in 1954. Three lakes were formed by the project. One was Lake Dogwood, used for flood control, fishing, and wildlife. One was Lake Plain Dealing, used for potential municipal and industrial use, picnicking, boating, swimming, water skiing, and fishing. There was also an unnamed lake for flood control only. Once completed, the 5,500-acre watershed would provide flood protection, municipal water supply, as well as fish and wildlife development. The benefits of investing in this massive project also ushered in a growth spurt for plain dealing. The whole community was involved in the project. The rights of way were mostly donated by citizens. S.H. Bollinger and Company donated work crews and equipment for clearing and leveling the shoreline and picnic grounds. The Boy Scouts piled brush and planted grass. The dams were completed in 1961. That same year, the creation of the lakes was named National Watershed Project of the Year. Plain Dealing had taken a great step forward in flood control and also received the bonus of a wonderful water recreation area. Fires have been particularly destructive in Plain Dealing. The history of the Keith store demonstrates the unfortunate frequencies of these fires. By the time Plain Dealing was chartered in 1890, James Pleasant Keith was already an established merchant in the area. He owned a general mercantile store in downtown Plain Dealing. Over the years, his store was in four different buildings. The first two Keith storehouses were located on East Cottonbelt Street, but they were both destroyed by fire. The first fire occurred on December 19, 1902 destroying 11 of the principal businesses of Plain Dealing, which was almost all the business portion of the town. The second fire happened on May 22, 1906, and again destroyed a large portion of the business section of the town. This fire was believed to have been started by robbers that robbed the Kelly Brothers store and then set fire to it. In its 75th year, on February 16, 1963, the Plain Dealing High School was destroyed by fire as a result of faulty wiring. The two-story brick building was built in 1928, opening its doors on September 17th to grades 8 through 11. The building was declared a total loss 
at an estimated $120,000, which was mostly covered by insurance. The Plain Dealing Fire Department was alarmed at 12.40 p.m. when the fire was spotted burning on the second floor in the middle of the building, and by 2.15 p.m. the roof collapsed. By 4 p.m. the firemen gained control, but not before the fire caved in part of the second floor and began to consume the first floor. Before the fire, voters had approved a bond to renovate the old building. Instead, these funds allowed the school's reconstruction. The Bossier Parish School Board approved a $350,000 contract to rebuild the school, which opened in time for the 1964-65 school year. Bossier City architect Thomas Meredith designed the new Plain Dealing High School, and McInnes Brothers constructed it. It was designed to provide improved lighting, more drinking fountains, more locker room space, as well as air-conditioned offices and libraries. The new Plain Dealing High School opened on August 31, 1964. Friends, former students, and teachers for the past 75 years were honored guests at the formal opening of the school. The ceremony included a brief history of the school, refreshments, and an open house tour of the new school building. In the 1950s, Plain Dealing was known throughout the Arklatex for the Dogwood Drive. The Dogwood Drive was a salute to the white blossoms of spring, for which the North Bossier Hills are known. Mr. Felix Phillips saw much beauty in the dogwood trees blooming the hills northwest of Plain Dealing. He thought that Plain Dealing should invite other people to the area to come and see how beautiful the dogwoods were when they were in full bloom. The inaugural festival was held in 1951. 12,000 people toured the Dogwood Drive the following Sunday, and an estimated 50,000 from 25 states enjoyed the breathtaking spectacle of miles of white blossom trees during the four-week festival. From two spots, Delaney Mountain and Gilmer Point, the visitors can see into three states at a sweeping glance, East Texas, South Arkansas, and of course, Louisiana. If a time machine could somehow catapult us back to the springs of the 1950s in Plain Dealing, we would be astounded that a town so tiny could mount a spectacle so enormous as the Plain Dealing Dogwood Drive Festival. People accustomed to small town festivals of today would stand transfixed by the grandeur of the Dogwood Festival Parade with its dazzling floats. After 14 phenomenally successful years, the Dogwood Festival was canceled in 1965 and 1966 due to extensive cutting of timber by some of the property owners. Even though the festival was eventually resumed, it was not the same after that partial destruction of trees. The cutting of timber on the Dogwood Drive that began in the mid-1960s had destroyed most of the Dogwood trees by the 1980s, and by 1991, the drive was no longer open to the public. Although the Dogwood Festival overcame the controversies that threatened it, it could not remain true to its vision without the Dogwood trees. The failure of the community to save the Dogwood trees should serve as a warning about the necessity for preservation of all things that are priceless and imperiled. In 1990, the town of Plain Dealing was celebrating its centennial. Frank James was chosen to be the Grand Marshal for the Centennial Celebration Parade. Mr. James is actually older than the town of Plain Dealing, as he was 103 years old at the time of the parade. Frank remembers the first car driven into Plain Dealing and the first cotton harvester that came to town. He also remembers how he met his wife Fanny at the bank in Plain Dealing. She would be sent out with the mail, and he would find her at the post office, asking if he could see her. Frank says throughout the years, even when he was sent to Rockford, Illinois, during World War I, he never thought of leaving Plain Dealing. Frank says, this is my home. I've had a pretty good life all in all. Mm -hmm.